we had been on and off with orthopedics since she was probably about three, just learning to walk. She walked late, so there was a lot of bracing going on. I just didn't have a good, a good diagnosis of what needed to be done. Diagnosed with mild CP when he was 18 months and in physical therapy since he's been five months. And we've been here ever since, and he's 16, and we're still coming back for therapies or doctor's appointments. Every child's very complex, very unique. And so we would watch them walk. And it was very difficult because you'd watch them walk usually in a busy clinic. And you might look at some pictures or video, but what you got at the end of the day really wasn't much. And it was very hard to codify that or look at that objectively. A lot of times kids with motion problems, particularly walking problems, will fatigue easily. So you can ask a child to walk down a hallway, but by the time you're able to appreciate all the different problems they might have, they're probably too fatigued to be doing the same pattern over and over. And if you're trying to get a picture of them walking from the front and from the side and really appreciate all the different problems they present with, the odds of you getting all that with them still fresh and happy and willing to continue are, are pretty low. So the lab kind of fills in those blanks by being able to record a lot of that information and being able to put numbers onto it. The main purpose of the lab is to measure uh, motion of the body during walking and how the joints are being loaded and how the muscles are working. I think parents and families really like this because they can very objectively see what you're doing and it gives them a sense that you're not just working off the cuff, you've got some real data. The gift from Ohio National that really funded the, uh, the equipment that went into this lab allowed us to put together a really excellent system, um, both in terms of the number of things we can measure and the quality of the technology. So 12 high-speed video cameras, four force plates in the walkway, we're able to measure 12 muscle signals wirelessly as the patient's walking. We can also measure weight distribution on the feet. We can measure strength of individual joints and muscles. Uh, we're able to measure energy cost with a face mask system that actually tells us how much oxygen the child requires to do a particular activity. This is the best tool that we have in our toolbox. That it's the most definitive, comprehensive, interdisciplinary approach to understanding movement that, that's out there today. Motion analysis sort of uh, grew out of this need to make more informed surgical decisions, but we have since taken the, the pieces of information that we learned from motion analysis and really tried to use those to um, make good, smart choices about conservative treatment too. Sometimes we find other things going on. So the patient who came in uh, earlier, Riley, everybody knew that her right hip was a problem and we confirmed that, but we also said let's pay attention to the left hip because even though nobody else is really looking at it right now, it has some deficits of its own and it's going to need to be addressed down the road. So surgically we can kind of be this plus, minus, or let's add something else to the mix. But outside of surgery, we can always take a look at, uh, is an orthotic the best way to go? So does the child need some support that maybe a simple brace is gonna be able to provide? Is there a strengthening issue or a flexibility issue? Maybe we can go conservatively at first and a round of physical therapy is the best way to move ahead. Once we have the information in hand, we can sit down at the table and we can talk through a particular patient's case. And orthopedics and physical therapy and engineering and physical medicine all have an equal say in what we identify as a patient's deficits and what we think is the best way to move ahead to address them. I think that's really where the power of this uh, exists. It's not just the technology, but it's the people behind the technology. That was kind of weird because they had to put all the stickers and, and scissors to check out my walking, but I knew it would help to see if I needed surgery or any other things that could help me out. Well, it's always frightening to find out your kid may need surgery. The motion analysis lab is non-invasive and it gives such a huge picture of what is going on that I think that it's beneficial to do it. It doesn't hurt them, they have fun, they look like they're playing games. What I found was fascinating not only was that I could do a better job at treating them, but I could see them afterwards and see the differences and it helped me learn what things really made a difference and how much of a difference it made. She runs, she plays just like a typical kid. She swims, she rides horses, she loves to ride horses and that is huge. So that was our biggest motivator of getting past the surgery is to get back on a horse. So, and she, she just wants to keep up and do what every other kid is doing. And this has given her the ability to continue that. Yeah, it kind of feels easier since the surgery because I'm looser and I walk better now and um, it's better. So you can stand straighter run faster, walk better, just from coming to the lab, 
seeing we needed surgery. He can move better than what he has his entire life. This place lets them see what the naked eye cannot see. We're able to fill in those blanks with the technology and uh, do the, the next level of analysis and the next level of care. Usually what you can do in orthopedic surgery is have someone walk as good as they walked before their accident or their injury. The best you can do is get back to where they were. But with the child cerebral palsy, you can actually make them better, and that is extremely rewarding.